What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. Otor recently sent me their newest laser, the Laser Master 2 Pro, and it got me thinking, where does this fit in my shop? And more importantly, how can I use it to make money? So today I'm gonna to tell you a little about this laser. More importantly, I'm gonna show you what I've been using it to make, and hopefully that will give you some good money-making ideas. To get started, I just want to show you guys how easy this is to use because I know it's a really commonly asked question. They give you a few of these thin plywood blanks, so let's use one of these. It took about 30 minutes to put this together. It may look like there was a lot of parts, but if you break it down into smaller assemblies, it's a lot less intimidating. Once you get it assembled, you'll need to download some software. I chose to go with Lightburn. It seems to be really well supported by the company and the laser community and it's super easy to use. I'll go ahead and turn the machine on. It will automatically home itself out to get a reference of where it is. First, I'll adjust my laser height with this block. And set my origin location in the program. I'm using this SVG of my logo, and you can see we have a couple different colors here. The main logo is black, and then this outline, which is blue. And what each of these colors represent is a different layer. And we can change the settings for each layer. So for this first one, I've got it set to a fill, and that means it's going to shade in this whole design. And I'm running that at 200 inch per minute at 80% power. And then for this outline, I have that set to line, and we're actually going to cut through this. We're doing it a little bit slower. It's at 20 inches per minute, still at 80% power, but we're gonna do three passes on that. And as soon as we're happy with that, we just click start. I wanted a bunch of stuff to practice on, so I went out and bought a couple of sheets of 5mm thick plywood. I also went to the dollar store and bought some canvases, notebooks, and some other wooden blanks. I already had some leather and cork, so we can go ahead and give that a try too. This is my first time using a laser like this, so I figured the best thing to do was start by cutting simple shapes. I kept trying different settings until I was happy. To test engravings, I generally start at 100 inch per minute feed and 80% power, and adjust it from there. If the engraving is too dark, I just speed it up. If it's too light, I slow it down. It may seem like I'm oversimplifying things, but it really is that easy. It may look small, but at 20 watts, this laser boasts some serious capabilities. Thicker material will require you to make multiple passes. For cutouts, I've had good luck using 20 inch per minute feed at 80% power and making one pass per millimeter of material. For example, this is a five millimeter thick sign and it required five passes. Once I find a setting I'm happy with, I take a picture of the project and then a picture of my settings so I always have them together. You can also write the settings on the back of the project. In my last video, I used my CNC router to show different examples of possible failures you can have when doing the unions for wooden flags. I decided to flip a couple over, spray paint them blue, and then use the laser to remove the blue paint and reveal my design. This is something I've wanted to be able to do for a while now. Not only can you get a really detailed design, but there's much less issues that you can run into when compared to the CNC router. Tile is a very popular thing to engrave. I'm still working to perfect the process, but here's one of the tests I've been running. It will show you the effects of different feed rates and power settings. These are a great place to put portraits or logos for GIF. Speaking of coasters, cork is a great thing to put on the bottom of them, and that's a great place to put your logo. I was able to get a ton of these cork blanks that was already cut to the size I wanted, but you can also use your laser to cut them out of a larger sheet. The ones I bought have a sticky back, so they're easy to apply. Out of all the materials I've been using, I think leather is my favorite. I'm really excited to be able to make patches for hats and the stuff I sell. It's important to make sure you're using veg tan leather, as chrome tan will release some nasty chemicals when it's burned. Make sure you're doing your research about what you're going to cut before doing so, and always work in a well-ventilated area. A fume extractor is a great accessory to add to a laser, and it's something I'll be doing sooner than later. 
While we're on the topic of safety, I want to mention a few great features this laser has. One is this big red emergency stop button. This will cause the laser to stop immediately when hit. The other is this flame detector. This will also cause the laser to stop immediately if a fire is detected. Otour added this orange protective shield on the LaserMaster 2 Pro. The light emitted from the laser can be dangerous to you and bystanders, and this shield makes it a lot safer. They also provided a set of these tinted sunglasses. I feel like I've barely begun to scratch the surface of what I can do with this thing. Now, everything that leaves my shop is going to have my logo on it, which is going to be great for my brand. On top of that, it's added a ton of possibilities for new products and better ways to do existing ones. If you're interested in learning more about this machine or ordering one for yourself, I'll put an affiliate link in the description. Any purchases made through there will help support the channel. I'll definitely have more content coming out on this, so be sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. It also really helps the channel out if you like, share, and leave a comment on the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see everyone over on one of these other videos.